Welcome, this is where nerds come to learn things. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. So today I watched a video by Voltlog, who's uh, another YouTuber, you should check him out if you don't already really know him. He's quite happy to chat to people online and stuff like that as well, so he responds to the comments quite well and he's, I know he watches my videos also. So um, go and check out Voltlog if you don't really know about him. Now I watched a video today for him checking out the TS100, um, the accuracy of the tip versus um, what he was actually trying to do was to ch check a T12 tip, which is one of these, against the TS100 tips and compare the heat up rates to see how quick they are. All right, now he's using a ESP32 iron, did he say it was? Oh, anyway, he's got a little soldering station there, a Chinese soldering station. So um, I've got a fake FX951, right? Heiko knockoff thing. And you have seen this in previous videos. If you haven't already seen those, just do a little search for FX951 on my videos and you'll see it there. You know, I've done a teardown on it, checked the accuracy of its tips, done a calibration, that kind of thing. Rep replaced the handle a few times, well, a couple of times. So I've got this decent handle on it now, so the original one, which makes all the world a difference on that particular thing. So it's trying to do that comparison between his soldering station, which should be the same, effectively work the same as mine, and the TS100. So I thought I'd just do a little comparison there, it's like a an addition to his video to see what results I get. And we can do a comparison between the two and see if there's many differences there or you know, does the soldering station really that, make that much difference. Now one little difference I do have is that this iron is running from 16 volts, not 19 volts. Okay, so I've got a 16 volt power supply on this thing because that just happens to be what I've got um, with the correct plug on it. And it runs at 16 volts, so it's going to be slightly lower powered. Bear in mind, if you're using a 19 volt supply, you will get better performance. If you're using a lower voltage supply, I think it goes down to like 12 volts or something like that, um, then you're going to get worse performance. So I'm kind of in the middle of the range of what you're going to get out of it, depending on how you run it. But ideally, you'd want to run this on 19 volt supply to get the best performance. Right, so you can see I've actually got a few different tips here. So this is the, the original tip, I think, that came with my TS100. It says TS82, I think it says. All right. um, I've also got these other three tips here. C4, TSC4, and I've also got these other ones too, which is TSIPCK, which is like a very small conical, and the BC2. Those are the tips I've got for the TS100. Now, these I haven't actually used before. This is brand new, unused, okay? Because um, I've only used this particular tip on that iron. Um, so what I've actually got here is a T12 tip for my fake Heiko FX951, and it's a BC4, all right? And if you look at the tips, they look very similar, okay? Size-wise, they're basically identical, right? They're really, really similar. They're about as similar as I can get them. So I'm going to put these tips in, and we're going to flick the things on. We'll see you know, how they perform, all right? What I want to do first is I'll, I'll do each one individually. I'll turn them on, and we'll do a temperature test and see how accurate the actual temperature is, so we know what they are. And then I'll set them to make sure that the actual, the actual real-world temperature is the same, okay? So... You do get errors in tip temperatures between you know the tip and the iron. You get that. Depends on the quality of the tip, I think, partly. But um, you know, the thermocouples have a tolerance region anyway. They're not always 100% accurate. There is a bit of a tolerance there. But how well made it is and how closely that tolerance is, is met is, is uh, what makes the fake ones not as good as the original ones in most cases. Okay. Um, you want exposition, then you get the higher quality tips. Now, all my tips, I believe, are fake tips. I don't believe any of them are real ones. The TS ones are obviously real ones. They came with it, pretty much. Um, so I think they're probably okay, but how accurate they really are, I don't know. We'll find out. So I've got my tester here, and I'll I'll chuck the tip in there. We'll get some solder on it. Then after we get a, an accuracy test done, we'll set both irons to be the same ac uh, actual temperature. And then I'll do a from cold heat up test and see how rapidly they heat. I'll probably set my phone up here with a timer on it or something and we'll see how quickly they come up to the same temperature and stabilize. So the first thing I'm going to do is obviously check the actual accuracy. So let's chuck a tip in here. And we'll turn it on. And I'll obviously put some solder in. So I don't have to wet it with solder or anything because it's not been used before. This may not like it initially. It might do a little calibration things because it's flicks through. 
it does that weird flicky through thing it just does that then it ends up being okay after that it's almost like it's doing a little self calibration or something I don't know there you go now it's working but it's kind of a little bit slowly so I forget this is on 16 volts so it's not the best performance you can get out of it but that's melted right that's all working so let's see what's actually sitting so I've got a set of 290 let's see what we actually get that's pretty accurate set of 290 actual is 290 right 291 292 that's damn good all right bang on because the next test I want to do is actually um, to see how quickly it comes up so we'll do the same thing on my other iron I've got the main unit turned off right now because it, it makes a beeping sound there's no tip on it so oh, better turn it on first day that'd be a bit smarter and I'll just make sure this is running at exactly the same temperature as the TS100 as long as the actual temperature is the same between the two even if the set temperature is different it shouldn't matter it should be real world performance is what you're trying to compare but again like I said this is only 16 volts not 19 volts which is the better option to use on it so that's up to temperature anyway let's measure it so that's pretty close it's really slightly higher so let's just drop this temperature down a little bit I want both to be exactly the same all right so actual temperature is now pretty much the same all right that's almost identical to the other one now okay so that's set of 293 so this particular tip here is really accurate it's a really good one um, mind you I did do recalibration on this on this FX951 so I was trying I kind of took the average of all the tips and, and went for the middle so they all perform fairly well but there were errors and obviously this is one of the better ones for the actual accuracy all right so that's cool so what I'll do next so I'm gonna get my phone and um, whilst his irons cool down I'll get all that set up and we'll do a timer test all right and we'll time how long it takes to come up to temperature from cold um, and hopefully we'll get some kind of results on that and give you an idea um, at least at a 16 volt rating change both the irons to be at 300 degrees C so it's direct comparison with what uh, volt log did okay so it should be the same temperature you can see they're both cooled right down no temperature there and uh, nothing there okay so they're both for ambient temperature we're ready to go now I'm going to start the timer the same time as I um, turn them on now when I turn up the turn on the FX951 it's got like a little boot up sequence so I have to wait for the boot up sequence and then I'll start the timer once it actually finishes booting okay so that way it's more accurate as far as actual heating time okay I should have time to actually press the button and get my hand back there all right again it's exactly the same still got sold on the tip from the last time it's melted solder this is set of 300 yeah it's almost there here we go all right so yeah I suppose I caught 28 seconds all right caught 28 if we go to the menu in here it shows 16.02 volts or so 21 degrees C is what it's reading I'll stick it on here you know, it's basically ambient temperature all right it's just slightly up almost nothing okay so that's basically cooled right down again so I'll do the same test again with a set of 300 degrees and we'll see how long that takes instead you can see the ambient side nothing that's fine reset that push start and I'll push this button again once the solder melts it will come right up quickly there you go solder's melting it's 
It's almost there. It's kind of it. Yeah, yeah. That'll do. Right, so 34 seconds, same time. Right, it took 34 seconds last time at 290. It took 34 seconds to get to 300. So, um, obviously it's the PID control within their software works pretty well. In fact, it's only running on 16 volts as well. You know, it'd be more powerful and faster if I was running on high voltage. I really want to try and set something up to do that. But 16 volts versus a fake Heiko. Fake Heiko wins. So this is a tip which came with this iron, which I think is the same one that Voltlog is using. B2, right? TSB2. So we'll stick this on here, and we'll see how this one goes for for heating up. Now I haven't got any solar on this, I'm have to feed some in as it's going, but we'll give it a go. And again, this is set 300. That's fine. Let's get this thing for really go, and we'll try it again. Feed some solder in too, just to make sure it's going to be okay. Once it's up to temperature, yeah, just a touch. Okay, that's stopping there. So that's the 290. So this has got a 10 degree error or 8 degree error. Okay, well, it got slightly better there, 294. So it's, even this tip has got a slight error, okay? So this shows, shows that um, the error there. So 26 seconds to get to that temperature. Uh, again, a 16 volts. On the side here, well, this is some comment on Voltlog's video saying it could run up to 24 volts. Of course, that's what the MOSFETs are rated to or something like, or was it 30 volts they're rated to? On the MOSFETs. I don't like running things at maximum ever, but someone mentioned it on, the, on his channel there. But on the side here, it says 12 to 24 volts. All right, right there. So, if you've got the possibility of running this thing at 24 volts, I'd say do it because it'll perform a lot better. You know, the more power you can put into it, the more power is going to come out of it. It's pretty simple, really. So, thanks for watching. Hope you found it interesting. Comparison's always good. But in this case, the FX951 beat the TS100 because, most likely because, my power supply for this TS100 is not high enough. Okay, given the choice, I'd run this on 24 volts, but um, I don't have a supply for it. I don't have any plugs. I was going to buy some, I just had to look around actually see if I could find some, so I could run them off my lab supply instead. But um, I don't have any plugs. Uh, I believed I was going to buy some, but I can't find any, so maybe I didn't get around to it. But uh, I'm going to have to buy some plugs now and probably do this test again in the future. Don't forget to subscribe, click the bell icon, that sort of stuff. All the good stuff, you know, and share the video too. Don't forget to share it. Sharing videos is good, you know, very important. Get other people to see us.